Welcome. This is a special report from Garrett at Garrett's Tech Lab. This is the big camper test. So let's get straight to it. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't just mildly surprised. I wasn't just kind of surprised. I was very surprised at the results that I got from both the camper and the batteries. Um, I honestly didn't know how much power my camper was actually requiring and I didn't know how it was using that power until I started using these units and being able to monitor the power consumption. So you will get a new understanding of the power usage of whatever device you decide to hook up to these units. Now, we tested four different tests over four different days. Uh, a lot of that's due to uh, we had to recharge these up each after each test and the recharge for these two devices is about five hours. Now, that may sound like a lot, but remember, that's 7,200 kilowatts worth of power that it's able to recharge in five hours. I'm amazed by that time. Um, I'm not uh, upset by that at all. And if you consider any of their competitors, they take six or seven hours for just one unit. It'd probably be 12 to 15 if they had a dual unit set up like this. So the five hours was good. Those four tests that we did do, we did it two different ways. We did the single unit with a heavy heavy load and a single unit with a, uh, what we would consider a normal load. We also did the dual unit, uh, single and normal loads as tests as well. And really the first thing we found out is that these units scale incredibly well. So if you're getting two hours, four hours, six hours worth of runtime on a single unit, you can rest assured that if you add a second battery to this system, you will get you will double your runtime that you'll get with both of these batteries. So that's very good to know that there's no major overhead or no major loss connecting these two. And that's probably why there's such a huge uh, battery cable between the two. Uh, my only gripe is again, that they've got that big battery, extra battery there with nothing more than a screen. And they lost an opportunity, I think, to be able to, um, have some additional ports. All right, let's get exactly to the test results. In our heavy testing scenario, this is this was the setup. We're going to cover the dual batteries uh, because, again, uh, all we need to do is divide that in half, and that's what you get on a single battery. Here's the heavy testing scenario. One. This is a 2021 Cherokee 304 bunkhouse. It's 37 feet long and it's a big camper. The weather outside was 65 degrees. We set the AC on high auto at 58 degrees. We also turned on an LG 43 inch LCD TV. We turned on the Google Wi-Fi. We turned on two LED lights. We turned on a normal powered 12-inch uh, LCD TV. That's what my son would be messing around with. We had the just the normal camper functions. We, we turned the microwave on high and cooked with it for one minute. Now, how did the batteries do? Uh, first of all, we found something out about the camper that we didn't know, and that is that when you first plug this thing up, it makes an enormous power draw, and, and to the tune of 1,200 watts or so. So uh, it really struggled getting the AC unit turned over when it was doing this initial charge. My assumption is that this occurs because it is trying to charge the battery off the camper first and that's the first thing it tries to do. So during that time we had several uh, fault protection issues on the unit. It would reset, turn off the AC ports, we'd have to go back out, turn those on. So we ended up waiting until that initial uh, charge occurred which took around 30-40 minutes depending on how low the battery is. Uh, once that is over you're able to uh, turn the AC units on and they perform perfectly fine. 
Now, if there's an RV specialist that's out there watching this, if you can confirm or deny whether campers are kind of engineered to charge their battery first, that'd be nice to know. And uh, because uh, one thing I haven't tested yet is disconnecting the battery and see if charging that eliminates that initial power drain. And I, I have a sus sneaking sus suspicion that it will. And if so, we can schedule that at a different time in the evening. We can reconnect the battery and let it do its big draw at that time and get that bad boy charged up on my schedule versus uh, impacting you know, the family. For what you really wanna know, the batteries ran with the AC on high, AC running full the entire time, the batteries ran for four hours. Now, I, I was really surprised by that. I expected closer to two, two and a half hours, but uh, the camper was averaging about 1,500, 1,600 watts, and both TVs and lights and uh, the Wi-Fi unit, everything was on and the high uh, AC, and we were only using about 15, 1600 watts. So I was really surprised by that, and uh, we were able to sustain that for a four hour period, and that was very good to know. So I think that's a five thumbs up for me, uh, because this really exceeded what we were looking for. We were expecting two to three hours, which is why we got the extra battery. So if you're in a one battery scenario, it would be able to power, fully power the camper with heavy AC for up to uh, two hours versus four. The normal testing scenario. Again, we've got the Cherokee, 37 feet long. This particular day, it was very warm, so the temperature outside was 76 degrees. We set the AC on low. We set the temperature on it this time to 72, which is about where we'd have it. Uh, we turned on the 43-inch uh, screen LCD. We turned on the Google Wi-Fi. We turned on two lights, and we had the normal uh, camping functions going on. Now, once we got past that initial power draw, we were able to run for, wait for this, eight hours. That's right, you heard me correctly. We ran for eight hours. And uh, we ran the batteries longer than we would typically do it. We ran the primary battery down to 8%, the backup batteries down to 12%, and kind of felt that was really low. We wouldn't normally run them that low, but we got eight hours of run time. So if you got a smaller camper, you know, you could not maybe even watching TV, you're just laying in the bed with a single light on, maybe you're at Walmart just camping overnight, I believe this thing can power that camper uh, for most of your night and then you can get it recharged during the day at a charging station or, um, or by power or some other means. But we were just staggered that we could get uh, eight hours. Now more than likely you get comfortably six and that's when you'd want to kick that generator back on and uh, recharge those batteries. But think about this, six hours of runtime five hours worth of generator time, six hours worth of run time. So for your one gallon of gas, you're now getting in excess of 15 hours of run time. And uh, I think that's awesome. Again, this is based on a 30 foot camper with a single AC unit. Your mileage may vary, but if your camper's much smaller than this, if you got a pop-up for instance, man, you're gonna be able to run for days, or at least a day, maybe two, uh, with minimal power. Now, with all good things, there are a few bad things that we found that we didn't like uh, with these units. Uh, one, again, I'm gonna say this, there are no outlets on the extra battery unit. I feel like this was a big miss if you wanted to deploy one on the second floor, one on the th uh, first floor of your house and serve those uh, floors out from each individual unit. You can't do that. They must be connected together uh, for everything. Uh, be it to provide power and actually to get power. The only way that the backup unit can get power is either being attached to the pro or using the, uh, it will attach to the uh, generator directly. So you could directly charge a external battery. 
the way they display the time. Each unit displays its time individually. So you will need to add the time up. On, the, on your primary unit, it may say two hours. Your backup may, units may say three hours. That is a total run time of five hours. I think, again, this is another small change they can make where you could either have the option of saying, I need the total time of both batteries, especially if you're having the uh, external unit, which I think only shows one screen. It'd be nice to be able to see the total run time of both batteries. Uh, don't necessarily even have to include the generator, but of both batteries so that uh, you'd be able to properly manage them. You can't turn the units off if they're plugged into the wall. Um, that's just a weird thing, I don't know why, but if they're plugged in, they won't turn off. If you disengage that power, you can actually t turn them off, but uh, really kind of threw me off for a minute. I thought I had a bad, I'm so afraid I had a bad unit, but actually once you just uh, turn the power off from one, you can turn it on for another. Um, the units can get a little loud. Um, the extra battery has no fans, it's pretty much just a battery pack. So um, I guess it doesn't really get that hot. It doesn't have any electronics in it or as many electronics in it. But the primary unit can get a little loud and it can get anywhere from 60 dBs to 81 dBs depending on how close you are and whether you're in line with those fans. So if you're using it for van life that where the cabin is really small, just something that you might want to consider, something to think about. Um, one other thing to think about is that the Pro can only charge from port one. So if you have two batteries, if you have the Pro and two external batteries, you're going to have to take, charge one up, disconnect it, charge the other one up and reconnect it. And then you can charge, then you can reconnect both of them to the main unit and use them as three, as a, as a three battery system. Your second battery needs to stay in port one. Just kind of know that. If you have a second battery, just keep it in port one and you'll be fine and use port two for your generator. None of these by themselves are deal breakers. Again, some of these are nitpicky, but they're just a couple little things that I've discovered while testing with these units. Um, overall, we're ecstatic on how they work. Okay, summing all this up. Based on the testing I've done with these batteries, you can easily power your camper anywhere from two to 10 hours. And the key being prudent with the power, of course. The other big thing is that the Delta Pro allows you to use the power where you need it most. You wanna power your camper, you wanna provide backup power at home, you need power at a booth at a fair, you need power at a job site, you want power at a cabin, you want power to a storage shed. I mean, you, you get the gist. Versatility is the key word here. And I mean, sure, it can provide power in all those situations and allow for portability that you just can't get with those traditional battle-borne battery systems which are typically locked into a single use case. The Delta Pros can be charged from a multitude of ways, home power, solar, generator, and soon wind. And when they charge, they charge faster than anything on the market today. We were able to charge 7.2 kilowatts in five hours. Now, in all fairness, I have the input set to 1.5 kilowatts, and you could go up to 1.8 kilowatts. In theory, these could even charge a little faster in five hours. To me, that combination of versatility and portability is why the Delta Pro is named in Times 100 Best Inventions of 2021. They are, seriously. Now, that's pretty much it for the camper test. Now, I, I love comments, so let me know what you think about these batteries and how you would use them. If there's anything you'd like to see that I didn't cover, let me know that also. I should have the Delta Pro Smart Generator unboxing and review available for you shortly. As always, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you're notified when I release that generator review. 
Thank you for watching. This is Garrett from Garrett's Tech Lab. Peace. Thank you.